You know, when I was a kid, I had this really cool Sega Genesis TV game. It had six games on there. Some of them were pretty good. It had Sonic the Hedgehog, Kid Chameleon, and this Altered Beast. Now, I never played this game on there very much. If I had to describe it in one word, that word would be frustrating. If I had to describe it in a few words, it would be frustrating as shit. This is a game that I would play and I would maybe get a level or two in, I would die, and then I would say, well, fuck this, I'm gonna go play a better game. So, I'd like to just take another look at it with a more critical eye and see what's good about it, see what's bad about it, see what its problems are, and see why I had so many problems with it as a kid. You know what? Honestly, I could have been the problem. You know, there were some games I wasn't very good at. I'd like to give it the benefit of the doubt. So, let's pop this sucker in the Genesis and take a look. The backstory of this game is a bit confusing. You play as a Roman centurion whose name I can really only assume is Stella. Zeus brings Stella back from the dead to get him to rescue his daughter Athena, who has been kidnapped by Neph, god of the underworld. But if he's Roman, shouldn't they be calling Zeus Jupiter? And Athena should be Minerva too. And Neph should be... Wait, who the hell is Neph? How come they didn't just use Hades? I don't have any problems with creating your own original gods and goddesses when using a Greek mythological setting, but why not just use the pre-existing god of the underworld Hades? Or I guess it would be Pluto. It's just a weird decision. Well, the game is Japanese, and I'm pretty sure they think eggplants with legs are a part of Greek mythology, so I'm just gonna let it slide. That's just the backstory, though. The main story itself is pretty bizarre, too. It's told through these weird purple circles. It took me forever to figure out why it was like this, but it's supposed to be told through Zeus's crystal ball. I guess he's a fortune teller in this continuity? Maybe he's got a booth down at the county fair, too. It's pretty annoying, though. I wish they didn't make it all purple. I fucking can't even tell what's going on in any of these. In the first one, it, okay, he's got Athena. In the second one, okay, there's like a cross and he's making a soup. Someone's screaming. I don't know who that is. Uh, the next one, I guess Athena got crucified. And in the next one, uh, she's a bird now. Neff looks pretty happy, at least. I'm not sure why Neff's endgame was to turn Athena into a bird, but you know what? I can respect it. You know, we all got our kinks. Some people like feet. Some people want to turn people into birds, huh? Yeah, I'm not judging here. The game is a basic side-scrolling beat-em-up. For what it is, it's mediocre. The arcade version that the Genesis version is based off of isn't very good either, but for an arcade game, the graphics are quite nice and the sound effects are really satisfying. The arcade game is a fun, basic, flashy experience, and that's really all you're signing up for. This Genesis version doesn't have these same qualities. Even though the graphics and sound provide a very close facsimile to the arcade version, it just isn't as good. Starting with the problems with the combat, Stella has six moves, a punch and a kick, each of those with a jumping and crouching variant. The problem with Stella's moveset is that half of the moves that you can do are useless or just very niche. Crouching Punch is the best move in the game by far, and what you should be using 90% of the time. For whatever reason, this move comes out way faster than any other move you can use while on the ground. Plus, it hits short enemies, which is really useful in this game. You can pretty much just spam this move on any enemy on the ground, and it's the best option you have. This move pretty much means you'll never need the standing punch or standing kick, unless you need that tiny little bit of extra range from the kick. Believe it or not, the aerial moves are even more spammable, but you'll never use jumping punches because jumping kicks have much better range. Crouch kick is actually really useful though. It's the only move that hits above you, which is obviously useful. It pisses me off though. Why the fuck would you think down plus kick hits up? I only realized this while I was button mashing. I thought you just had to eat ass if the enemies were above you. Well, uh, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe up was already being used for a different move. Maybe he's got an uppercut. Oh, uh, nope. Up does nothing. Wonderful. I'm actually kind of impressed. You have games like Tekken, where the characters just have so many moves, some of them naturally end up being useless, but this game has six moves and half of them are useless. Nice going, guys. The most cool and unique thing about this game is its transformations. You can transform into a myriad of different beasts. Man-wolf, man-dragon, bear This one's just a bear, what the fuck? Each transformation replaces your regular moves with two new ones, and honestly, they're pretty weird. How would you think a wolf attacks? A bite? Maybe a slash? But no, you do a super dash or shoot an electric furry ball. The dragon just shoots electricity and has an electric barrier, which makes the worst noise in the world. I apologize to all headphone users. The tiger does a dash like the wolf, but vertical and fires a drunk ping pong ball that moves at the speed of the quad laser. 
The bear might be the weirdest one, though. He does a spin jump like Sonic the Hedgehog, or he can... What is this? Is he trying to take a shit? The attack is just squatting and grunting. I'm pretty sure he's constipated. The attack also petrifies normal enemies for some reason. Maybe he's got bad breath? But you never need to use this for anything like platforming as far as I can tell. So I'm not really sure why it has this property. It would have been kind of neat if you could use this during the boss fight. But there are no mobs during the fight, so that doesn't happen. The only use I found for it is that you can freeze this ant guy right before the boss, and if you stand on it and squat, you can put your butt on Neff's head, and if you start grunting, it looks like you're trying to take a shit on him. You know, I, I said I found a use, I never said it was useful. You know, this isn't a super important detail or anything, but it really bothered me every time I played the game. Look at this screen with the wolf. Notice anything wrong? Well, look at it. They fucked up the positioning on the wolf. You can see where his sprite cuts off, and you can see the background between him and the flames. How did they miss that? I fucking noticed it, and it bothered me every time I played the game. They didn't mess it up with the rest of the transformations, so I don't know why they missed it here. It looks terrible, and honestly, I, how does that get into a professional game? That's it for the transformations. The only other one is the wolf again, but it's golden now. It's so different. The game is pretty short. Only five levels, but those are some bullshit five levels. The point of each level is to kill three blue two-headed wolves and grab the power-ups they shit out all while fighting off zombies, demons, and the world's horniest ants. Oh, oh my goodness. Can I even show this on YouTube? I might need to censor that. Though, what is weird is that the manual refers to these wolves as three-headed wolves, but they clearly only have two heads. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, now here comes the part of the video where he makes the joke about how the third head is the wolf's penis. But, you know what? I'd like to think this internet web series is a bit too classy to make dog dick jokes two videos in a row. So, I'll just assume he lost the third head during his time in Nam. Grabbing each power-up powers us up a little bit more until we can get all three and alter into a beast. And only then can we fight the level's boss. If you don't get all three, Neff will just awkwardly leave. He doesn't even walk away, he literally just slides right out of there. Man, I, I wish I could do that. I'd look like a fucking Roomba. If you fail the power-up check, you have to play more of the level until you get three power-ups, which is pretty bad. The game is arcade style, but it's like if you went to the arcade with only one quarter and a bucket of hopes and dreams. That is to say there's no continues in the game. Three lives and it's a game over, which is pretty harsh and probably my biggest problem with the game. Your health is a finite resource. There are no extra lives and no health pickups either. If you get hit, that's health you'll just never get back. That's why it's so imperative to get the power-ups the first time through. The longer you play, the more mistakes you're bound to make, and the more likely that you'll have to just restart the whole game. The game is short, and it's even shorter when you know what you're doing. But the game is a constant cycle of playing the game, losing, starting again, making it a little bit further, losing, and repeating ad nauseum. It's frustrating to say the least, especially when you die on stupid trial and error bullshit. If you get to level 3 and you haven't learned about the high jump yet, sorry, that's a life on the first pit. Or, you finally manage to beat that tough boss you were having trouble with, only to start the next level and immediately die to a unicorn doing flying kicks at you. Fucking stupid. The bosses can really beat dicks too. It's really trial and error until you can figure out a good way to beat them. And that's pretty rough when you have to play through four stages just to figure out how to kill a boss. Once you get it though, you can get them done pretty fast. The best example of this is in level 2. You fight this eyeball watermelon, and he just launches eyeballs fucking everywhere that are sometimes impossible to dodge. But, you can find a sweet spot before the boss transforms and you can just do this. Wow. The level 3 boss is pretty stupid though, I'm pretty sure it wasn't even programmed right. Because if you look at the arcade version, doing this makes it take damage, but in this version it doesn't, and you just have to awkwardly spin jump into it and get slowly pushed out. Level 4 is probably the hardest, and I never really found a simple cheese. You can sit back and try to kill him with the ping pong ball, which is your safest option, but it takes approximately 3 hours, so don't do that. You have to just try and kill him by using the dash tech right next to him, but not into him, and he'll take damage from that, and it's way quicker than using the ping pong ball. After you learn this, it's manageable, but it takes so friggin long to learn. At least the final boss is easy. If you have at least two bars of health left, the boss is free. All you have to do is crouch punch and just spam that shit. The only move he has that can hit you is his kick or his dash, but his dash comes out really slow when you can react to it, and the kicks, well, they're too fast to react to, but they barely do any damage, so just eat the kicks and punch him in the shin till he dies. Simple as. But honestly, for a short game, all of this is way more of a pain than it's really worth.
And you know what? There's nothing wrong with having a short game, but there's only so much you can do to get better. The whole game is an auto-scroller, which just sucks. Even if you know every enemy placement, every trick, every system abuse, which I pretty much do, you can only go as fast as the screen. It makes going through the early levels a complete drag, and it makes it hard to feel like you're really improving. Like, for example, look at Super Mario Bros. If you're good enough at that game, you can beat it in less than 10 minutes, and even shorter if you're really good. But with Altered Beast, you can only really save time on the bosses, and just make sure you get all the power-ups the first time through but you'll still be stuck with the majority of your playthrough in the first few levels of the game. The problem this causes is that it turns the game into a completely reactive experience. Once you know the level, all you're doing is responding to everything that you already know is coming. Zombie here, blue wolf here, giant falling on my head here. It all becomes routine and very boring. It feels like playing a rhythm game on a setting you've already mastered until you're allowed to play the new and interesting stuff, which just sucks. The game is a constant cycle of frustration. It's too bad the game doesn't have continues or a level select. Wait, hold on. I lied. It actually has both. God damn it, I wish I had known that as a kid. But it says to continue when the game over screen appears, press the D button in the upper left corner while pressing buttons A and B at the same time. A continue message will appear and you may resume play at the beginning of your last round. It's a little bit convoluted, you know. Some games you can just press continue, and I think that's enough. But you know what? I'm glad it has it. So let's give it a shot. Hey, right, there we go. Continue. Okay, um, I guess it's a little bit of a delayed response. Well, while we wait, I guess we could talk about the arcade version a little bit. As someone who missed out on the early days of arcades, this game must have been really cool to see. Altered Beast has large, detailed sprites, great music, and even voice acting that probably made it really stand out among its competitors at the arcade. It's not a great game, as I said before, but it is fun enough to play. The frustration of not having continues is replaced by the frustration of having to put a million quarters into the machine to get it through, but being able to pick up right where you left off is a godsend compared to the Genesis version, even if it does cost you a little bit of money. This version feels a lot more solid than the other versions and the arcade version is definitely the definitive experience of this game. If you want to play any version of this game, this is the one I would recommend. Well, that took a good little while. Can I continue now? Oh, I'm back on the main menu. Wonderful. I guess it just takes a little bit. I mean, like, at this point it almost doesn't seem worth it, but I'm willing to keep going. You know, I really just don't want to play through those levels again. I just want, I just want to beat the fucking game. I guess we could talk about the Famicom version a little bit. I mean, I'm shocked to even know this exists. It may seem pretty normal nowadays, but back in the days when Nintendo and Sega were the fiercest of rivals, seeing the Sega trademark in a Nintendo game must have been kind of crazy. This is a valiant attempt at porting Altered Beast to the Famicom. It's too bad it turned out a bit shite, really. The first thing you'll notice are the graphics and the music, which honestly, they're not too bad. They're fairly loyal adaptation, just an 8-bit. The sprites are way smaller though, which means your attacks are smaller too. And I mean way smaller. I mean, look at this! Is this an attack for ants? Well, you know what? I guess it actually kind of is, technically. This makes it really hard to attack enemies, which is just compounded by the hit detection, which is genuinely one of the most horrendous excuses for hit detection I have ever seen. Sometimes your attacks hit, sometimes they don't. That's really all there is to it. There doesn't seem to be much rhyme or reason at all. The game does make a few changes which I like. There's three extra stages, each with new beasts, and since the game doesn't have a jump button, the high jump was replaced with a double jump, which is neat. You recover health too when you defeat a boss, which is great and rewarding. Oh, and when you die? What's that? Oh, why, it's a continue option. What's that thing they used to say in the commercials? Sega does what Nintendo don't. Not this time, I guess. You only get three continues, which is better than nothing, but this game is hard and fairly lengthy when you have to start over so many times, so it's still pretty rough, especially when the whole thing feels so jank. I had trouble with the game, and I used save states pretty heavily, so that probably says something. All in all, this version has some neat additions, but those don't count for much when the game is pretty awful to play. In conclusion, fuck this octopus. I hate this asshole. Fucking hitboxes the size of the friggin' solar system. Can I continue now? No? Uh, running out of versions of Ultra Beast to talk about. Um, uh, how about the Master System version? You know, the Master System version of Ultra Beast was a really valiant attempt to port Microsoft PowerPoint to the Master System. Yeah, don't play this version.
Well, fuck. It looks like continues aren't gonna happen. At least we can still use the level select. This game has fucked me pretty hard, so you know what? I'm gonna fuck it too. Straight to level five. Now all I have to do is press start and, uh, and uh, this is level one. What the fuck? The changes I made to difficulty and the health went through, so what the hell happened? I guess I'll look this up online. Oh, okay. You have to press A and start. What the hell? The game might as well tell you to do a King of Fighters pretzel motion and shove your hand right up your ass because you know what? That's about just as useful. You know what? Fuck this game. Fuck this line manual. I'm done with this shit. Happy feet! Wombo combo! That ain't Falco! That ain't Falco! Oh! oh, oh. oh.